you're just tuning in, it's our Ladies' Night Out, and we want to understand what accountability in governance means to you as a Nigerian. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. And for those that have been trying to call the WhatsApp number, the phone lines are open now. Please, when you're calling, turn off the volume of your television set and try to keep it within a minute. Thank you so much. All right, so Uti, I'll come to you. You want to say something before we went on a break. You have some comments with you. Yeah, so, so in the course of the show, I received this very long comment, which I thought sort of tied into what Tabi was saying about the role that people also play in um, holding the government um, accountable, accountable. So it says here, it says, so interwoven is the tendency of elected officials to disregard accounting to the people. The system inadvertently supports it as it's been perverted. Nigerian banks help to move Ibori's funds abroad. Where the, banks, where the bank board sanctioned, the volume of money is so large, it couldn't have been moved physically. Even if it, had moved, even if it was moved physically, the port officials allowed him fly through VIP and all. It shows Nigerians like you and I cooperated to effect the move of the funds. The judiciary tried him in Nigeria and found him innocent, despite yeah. obvious evidence. Mm -hmm. It took a UK court with integrity to find him guilty based on his records in the UK and his financial cash flow. Now, Ibori handed over to Udwaha, who, who is very close to him and finished his two terms and handed over to Ifaiyoko, who is very close to Udwaha. It's a cyclical problem. If you refund the money to Delta State, it may very well find its way back to Ibori. If handled by the federal government, you know you can't expect good news. So it's, um, it, it just sort of creates a cycle there that gets you thinking that really, where could this money really end up? So we have another comment from Benson. Mm -hmm. And Benson says, honestly, for me, accountability will be as simple as Lagos Ibado Expressway. What is percentage of job completed? What is the expect expected completion date? How much money has been spent? Yes. How much money left to complete it? This will surely help carry Nigerians along. Same for other critical projects, the second Niger Bridge, the rail projects, and every other infrastructure project. So this just ties into what Timmy was saying. If you had a website where you could track this information, then there'd be transparency. Let me tell you something, my experience. I don't know if I should share this. So the, the, there was a project, right? There was a, the, because we are farmers, you know. So there was a farmland that Lagos State government wanted to uh, lay off in Ocean State, and we we everybody was asked to come and bid for the for the for the farmland, and we did so. This was during Ambadi's um, government, and afterwards we didn't hear anything from the people anymore, or who won the contract or anything. As soon as the new um, dispensation came into um, uh, what's it called came into power, the next thing I was hearing, I think a week or two weeks after, headline: Lagos State government acquires the farmland. I was like, huh? How can you acquire something you already owned? Because I know ex I know that farmland because we visited the farm, 82 acres of farmland somewhere in Ocean State. Mm. How can you visit how can you acquire something you already owned? You know, so this is what we're talking about when we talk about accountability. And the government, we're not stupid. Right? If you say that, I mean, you keep reissuing the same project. You, 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 you sign off this contract, you recommission it to somebody else, and nobody is asked questions, right? I mean, I remember many years ago, my father was going to go into, he wanted to do a, a road project because my father is into construction. And I remember the person telling, he's a very prominent person, I wouldn't mention his name, telling him that in Hausa language, just kawasa kasa kawai, there's poor sand on the floor, you don't have to do the roads. It was the integrity of my father that said, you know what, I cannot do this kind of thing and people will die on this road because of bad road and the blood will be on my head. So I would rather leave the contract and leave you. So the accountability thing that we're talking about, it is vast. Every sector, every area. You are asked to go and buy um, a pen in an office. A pen that's supposed to cost 200 naira, you quote 1,500 naira and nobody is questioned. Right? The money is, is, is disbursed. Nobody is questioned. So the, 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 the thing has eaten really deep. And I do not even know where to start from. I would have suggested that this accountability thing that we're talking about, especially for the looted funds, because this is what is on the front burner. Why can't they create an account? Right? Why can't they create an account where they say, okay, this is how the money will be withdrawn and this is how the project is going to. But let me take Richard from um, Lagos. Richard, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> good, evening. good evening, guys. Hi, Richard. Yeah, who I see your pain. Uh, let me tell you something about these guys. Hello, Richard. Anybody that does want to feel 
to be accountable, just like you were a husband, you don't want to be accountable to your spouse. That means there's something shady that you're doing, you don't want them to know. These guys don't want us to know what they are doing. And let me tell you something, all these shenanigans will stop when the people decide that it's high time for you to stop. I heard you talking about that for that new road. What will you say now? It is the same party that has been in power since 1999 till date. Who are they going to say is responsible? Why did you finish that road? You want to use their salmon to come and do your Lagos in the best road that has been awarded for donkey years? I don't understand this country. This country is, you know, you know, you know, if you want to see what you see, you, you, it's just like you want that you don't understand what they are doing. It is it's so sad. I, I, I rest my case. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Tammy, let me come to you. Okay, there's a comment here from Tommy Lola Ugeding, Bay from Lagos. And the person says, well done, ladies. Keep the fire burning. Accountability is when an individual experiences consequences for their performance or action. Accountability is essential for an organization and for a society. Without it, it is difficult to get people to assume ownership of their own actions because they believe they will not face any consequences. Are Nigerian government accountable? The answer is capital no. Nigerians need to hold the government accountable in every way. What happened to Abacha's loot? We, we need, need to, to ask, ask questions. questions. Yeah. That comment is from Tomilola Ugedenge from Lagos. Absolutely. Then you have another one. Tell me, go ahead. You have another comment with you. Okay, I haven't received it yet. As soon as I okay. do, I will. All right. I haven't okay. received that yet, but as soon as I do, I'll read it out. So, Uti, let's go back to the, the comments that you got from um, someone when he was talking about what Temi said about us, the, um, the indigents, because we shouldn't call ourselves citizens. Dele Faro Temi taught us that. You know, so how can we start to um, hold our leaders accountable? Yeah. What should we do? So again, I mean, it's difficult, right? Because when you even say that the citizenry or the indigents want to hold their government accountable, remember what I said about servant leadership. If your leaders don't believe that you can hold them accountable, you can try all you want, you can wish all you want, you can, you know, can you imagine yourself who are today marching to Alausa to demand that you want to see the governor or a commissioner because you want to know what's going on. You won't get very far. No. I mean, even, you know, the government house is far. Try your local government chairman. You won't even get into his office. So when we even talk about holding our leaders accountable, there is, first of all, the problem of the mindset of the leader. Yeah, accessibility. And, you know, we've talked about this so many times on the show. It's not even just about the leaders at the very top. Anybody that is in any kind of position of power has no concept of what servant leadership is. It is now an office to lord over people. It is now an office to be the supreme ruler. And, you know, you're not accountable. Hmm. So when we say that, how can people begin to even hold people accountable? I mean, what we can do, which I know that Nigerians probably don't do enough of, it's like some of the things that Temi just mentioned. How much information do you really have mm -hmm. about what your rights are? Mm -hmm. What should you be able to access? Mm -hmm. What should you, by law, you know, be able to demand? At least let's even start from there. If you say, I want to go the legal route, I want to demand. Let me, let me use, for instance, a simple example. You know, data in the UK, you as a person, have the right to request from any organization every single bit of data that they have of you. And when you write to them and ask for it, they have a time frame within which they must provide the data. Hmm. They must provide all that information. Who do you want to write to in Nigeria today and say, I would like to know what you are doing? <laughs> Will your letter even get read? Come to talk of get a response. <laughs> Let me come to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a jump question. <laughs> Tell me, go ahead, please. Okay, so I have a feedback here from I have a feedback here from Ade. Good evening, ladies. For Nigeria to be great, 
we need an external watchdog to monitor all government projects. UK money recovered belongs to Nigeria for infrastructure development. If the money gets to the state in question, that is Delta State, it will still land in Ibori's hand. Abacha looted money that was recovered. It is still being relooted by these present government officials. Still, so till now, we haven't seen any accountability. That comment is from Ade. Ah, okay. So, um, I, I would, my thoughts, do you have any other comments? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, I mean, from everything we have just been saying, I mean, my thoughts, to, if, if there's anything I'll be saying to the government, I do hope that there are some government officials who are listening. I, I mean, I, I would like to believe that there are people who still have so much integrity and who maybe they are in the system, but they are not a part of the system as we think it is, you know, or, or the system in that sense of it. You know, they still have so much integrity and that. I'd like to just say to them that they need to put data out there. They need to put information okay. out there. It's not enough to be doing good work. It's not enough you have to, to also be communicate. All right, it's not enough to be Tammy, please hold that thought. I have a call. Um, Aliu from Auchi, I believe. Thank you so much for joining us. Let us hear what you have to say. Hello. Thank you so yeah. much for calling. This is Aliu calling, calling from Auchi. Thank you for calling, Aliu. Yes, yes. In terms of uh, accountability, I think that uh, Nigerians are at fault. Because uh, most times, the leaders themselves, we will say, do not believe in, they do not believe that they, they, they are supposed to do the right thing. No, I don't believe them. The problem here is that we Nigerians are citizens, are citizens do not know exactly what to do. We are probably ignorant of what to do, probably because there's no adequate information. The question I want to ask is, what happened to the, 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 the Freedom of Information Bill? Mm. As it is today, there is no way you can go to any government department, agency, or ministry to request for information, and you get it outright. It is practically impossible. What happened to the whistleblowing policy? Hmm. It is, to me, a mere policy without the will to implement. So if you look at it critically, you see that uh, Nigerians... As far as we are concerned, we are just going around a circle. Yes, the, even the people in mm -hmm. power are not ready. They do not have that willpower to render good governance to the people. Let me tell you a little story. Some time ago, I was very critical of my local government chairman. It's a West local government. At the time, he rushed to the palace to, to report to the king that he should plead with me to leave him alone. You see the, the kind of mentality that some of our leaders exhibit, that even myself that is asking him to develop the community, I am not living within the community. I have gone to somewhere to build my house where I stay, and I'm asking him to develop the community. That is the kind of leadership that we have. They are not even aware that what they are doing is wrong. Because when a man doesn't believe that what he's doing is wrong, there's no way he can do the correct thing. Absolutely. I think that was why um, Uti started. Thank you so much, um, Aliu. Yes. That was why Uti started with that servant leadership, that if they understood the concept of servant leadership, you know, they would know that they are here to actually serve us. But Uti, you have a comment because um, we're running out of time quickly. We're running out of time. Yes, so this comment, um, I believe this is from um, Raphael uh, Akori in Zaria. Yeah. Um, and this says, there is no single word in our dialect that can be translated to corruption. So the hypocrisy of the West, the what is underdeveloping Africa. Who is more corrupt, the custodian of the loot or the looter? The Nigerian government should demand for interest on the loot. And that's a simple definition of accountability. Now, that's a very interesting and different perspective by Raphael. I, I have a contrary opinion. I think that would you even have loot if this same government didn't prosecute and find him guilty? If they weren't doing their jobs, would you uh, even have this it, money which you would then be fighting? But even me, I calculated it. Hold on. I agree with Raphael to some extent. Even I calculated it. Four million pounds. 
if you kept it somewhere, would it not be yielding interest? There should be interest on the money. <laughs> so I don't I don't no, blame no, Rafa. But I agree with you. If you kept it somewhere, would it if you kept it somewhere, would it be yielding the interest? But that's as if you knew you had it. Hmm. She is the one you know that you would chase that you talk about. Yeah. When you people were chasing the man, did, wait, how many have you recovered in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. The one that then the, the, the UK has helped you to recover, then you're asking for interest. Please, please, please. <laughs> so as we wrap up, you know, because we ran out of time, let me hear your thoughts, Uti, and let me start with Tammy. What are your final thoughts on, you know, what if we say we want to start today, right, accountability now in governance, what and what would you like to see the government start to do? to show that, yes, they are ready, you know, to be accountable to us. Mm. So, for example, I mean, I will just go back to my last thought, which I was making the other time. And that's just simple. So, for example, some of the things the government has done, government in administration now across different, and I, when we say government, I don't just mean the federal government, or it is so that it doesn't look like we're talking about federal government, or maybe even the state government. It's even as little as grassroots yeah. local government. So I'd just like them to publish information about their work, about the things they have done, about monies that have been expended, and just put it out there, possibly in newspapers, possibly on the website, you know, on their um, personal website, or rather the government website, so that it's easy to just access this information. It would just be easy to take a look at their website and at a glance. You know what the government has done. All right. Uti, how about you? Um, mine is simple. It won't take a lot to make a difference. When we think about some of these things, sometimes we think about it from a very grand perspective. We want huge bells and whistles. Um, even though we say that it's difficult for a lot of these things to be achieved, from the perspective of the leadership and those in charge of government, you don't actually have to do so much to be a shining star. You know when it's so bad? When you're at the bottom of the barrel, it only takes a tiny little spotlight in the darkness for it to seem like, you know, the sun is shining. So, and as Nigerians, we're so conditioned for the bad that even a little drop of good will be excited. So we ask you just to give us a little, a quarter of an inch, half an inch, a whole inch if you're feeling magnanimous, but do something. Start to show us that you want to close this gap. And for the Nigerian people, we must also start to exercise our rights. We, someone said if more people in this country read and did a little research, a lot of trainers and motivational speakers would be out of work. And that I is so you. true. That's the truth. We need to learn. We need to know. And we need to take action. Absolutely. I'll leave it there. I, I think that that's a f fantastic way to wrap it up. And I'll just add, for parents that are raising children, learn not to shut them down when they're asking questions. Because naturally, a child will ask you like a million questions just on one thing. So I think we too, were, our minds were conditioned to be shut down. Don't ask questions, don't ask questions, don't ask questions. So we have adults now that see things going wrong and they're not asking questions. So parents, please allow your children to ask as many questions as possible. Thank you, ladies, for a fantastic conversation. Thank you, everyone that called in. And they could please stop calling the WhatsApp number. Always call the number on the screen. All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence life towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze and follow us on all our social media handle as this will be an all year round engagement. So tell your friends to keep all eyes on Waze. In case you missed today's quote, here it is again. A lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. That's from Dalai Lama. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.